What is going on? Welcome to part two of Financial Freedom. So in part one, I have all the notes right here and all the good things that you actually wanted to know with, say, Financial Freedom. You know, a lot of people think about this. I was actually wrote it down as another video, but it's not only the perception of wealth, but it's also the perception of wealth among other people. So in other words, if you feel, listen to this study, they asked people, they said, would you rather have $100,000 while everyone has $50,000 or would you have $200,000 where everyone else has $300,000? In other words, most people chose, though it was less money, $100,000, they would rather be wealthier than other people. So in other words, it wasn't about the actual money, it was the perception of money among others. It was the perception of money comparing themselves to others. In other words, they felt it wasn't even about making more money, it wasn't even about being better, it was about actually comparing themselves to others. So think about that for a second. It's actually the perception of money, not only to other people, it's the perception of money to others. In other words, if you live in a society where you had no idea that there's wealthy people, there's billionaires and trillionaires, in other words, pre-internet, pre, say, publications of newspapers even 100 years ago, and you're on a farm in the middle of nowhere, you just said, this is how everyone lives. You had no idea. You had no idea. But now that the perception of wealth and money and Lamborghinis, Ty Lopez and Flying Private and all these things are all out there, your perception of where you are is totally all over the place because you're comparing yourself to where other people are, all right? Which was number one of the last one, which was your blueprint. Moving on, okay, automate good behavior. Automate good behavior, in other words, first of all, you have to track yourself. Track your spending, track your mindset, track not only your money that's coming in, in other words, if you have multiple businesses, obviously if you're just an employee and you just get one paycheck, you obviously know how much you make. And But the biggest thing is I highly recommend you sign up for zero, which is X, E R O not paid or anything, but it's the it's what I use for my business and for my personal, and that's how I track everything. And this literally was the game changer because what you have to do is you have to go in and you have to file everything away, and then you start saying, did I really need to purchase those shoes? Did I really need to sign up for that service? Did I do I really need this monthly overhead, even if it's the smallest thing? You know, I have a couple things that are like five, ten dollars a month, but then if I have ten of those, that's sixty dollars a month or a hundred dollars a month. So I started going down. I'm like. Actually, I don't really need Canva for business, or I actually don't need this, uh, a, the paid resource, the free resource is enough. So it forces you to actually line item where you're spending. Deeper into that is you get a paycheck and what happens, okay? So you get it and most people just spend it or they know where they're gonna spend it or they have a vacation or a trip coming up. But the thing is, there's categories that you need to actually fundamentally put all of your money into and all of your focus because that's the future. That's your IRA, that's your 401k, that's that's your freedom funds, that's even your spending account, that's your taxes account if you own a business, all right? That is the most important categories. Most people say, what am I gonna spend this on? But they don't actually line item. Another place is Vanguard. Vanguard is great. Obviously, it was featured in Tony Robbins' book and that just opened my eyes. Highly recommend you check that out. Uh, Tony Robbins wrote two books about financial, not only just the load, in other words, you have uh, front end, back, I think it's front end, back end load, I, I'm not as uh, familiar on that, but you are charged for obviously having your, your account managed. You know, if it's a mutual fund, which I worked at Oppenheimer Funds, and I had no idea. So 1% of say 6% or 7%, it doesn't sound like a lot, but it's actually one of six, so in other words, one sixth or one seventh of your money. That's a lot. That's a lot. When, especially if you're compounding that. Highly recommend you check out a couple financial calculators in, in regards to how much money you're actually spending on mutual funds. And obviously if you're buying and selling stock, it's per transaction, which it's not that bad. But if you have your money at American funds, Oppenheimer funds, uh, Franklin Templeton, all these mutual fund companies, they take a ton of money and it all just compounded over years is not that good. So in other words, I wrote down here, auto transfer for bills, expenses. However, when it comes down to savings and retirement, also auto transfer that. I have auto transfer every single, I think it's every single two weeks, I have money, a certain amount of money that's taken out and put into different accounts on Vanguard, all right? It's just ACH'd out. In other words, it goes directly from my account out, all right? Number six, 
reading too, too much financial news, it's very short term. All right, listen, I've already talked about news. I don't need to talk about it again. Um, they just are there to sell books. They're just there to sell subscriptions. They're just there to sell, in other words, books by the, the, the people that are on the actual show, CNBC, MSNBC, Fox Business, all that. You know, a lot of them are there. They, they don't, they make say $200,000 on Fox Business, but they all have books, all right? They all have appearances that they need to uphold. And that's where they really make their money. And if it's, if it's uh, say Fox Business or something else, or, or if it's a website, they're looking to sell subscriptions. They want your eyeballs to be watching that. So it's very short term. Elon Musk took a, took a hit of a blunt on Joe Rogan's podcast, or, or this car company call said that they're announcing they're gonna automate steering. Okay, well what, by 2021, 2022, Tesla already has that. That's three or four years out. Imagine what Tesla's gonna do in the next three to four years. Look long term. So anything that you actually read on the news, I wrote this down, is short term. The second thing I wrote down is that you can't predict the future and neither can the pundits, okay? The, the biggest thing that you have to understand, and, I, and this goes back to number one, is what is your blueprint? And then number two is what is your plan? Okay, if you're later in life, obviously you're gonna go with safer assets. If you're earlier in life, you're, you're willing to put your, your money not only into riskier assets, but, but more, more diversified. In other words, stocks, bonds, maybe some mutual funds, and I, I don't really recommend mutual funds. Uh, you know, obviously in, in Tony Robbins' book, they pushed low cost index funds. So the index funds obviously just follows the market, and then the low cost is, is just, you, you literally just have their money there, and it's just enough money, obviously, to make a profit, but also to manage your money. And you don't really need mutual funds because you can't predict the future, blah, blah, blah. We don't need to go into that. Focus on your personal economy and stop worrying about the world economy, okay? Your personal economy is where are you spending your money? I already talked about that, but most people are like, well, what about Donald Trump? What about my local elections? What about what happened with Tesla? What about what happened with, and it's just like, dude, you're overspending, it doesn't matter, or you're not making enough, it doesn't matter, or your taxes are exactly the same, it doesn't matter. Focus on your personal economy, don't worry about the global economy. The last things, the last thing I wrote, which I already talked about, is watch out for the fees. The fees are the things that are hidden, they're the small print, the things that we don't even focus on pretty much ever at any time because we just say, oh, look at all the money I made. But it's how much money you could have made, okay? So highly recommend that you put, you look long term. You also look out for the fees. You also don't look at it every single day. You have to understand that this is a decade, two decades. But you wanna look at it quarterly and say, okay, what are we doing? The thing is, obviously with Bitcoin, is that most people bought it at the height and then it went down and the people that sold it at the height are the ones that got here and then they sold it here and then you bought it here and then you rode the wave down. It's all emotions, it's all short term, look long term. I hope this helps a little bit. Uh, you have to, you know, do I pay down debt? Do I actually make more money? What, what do you do? I think you should do both at the exact same time. So you want to put 50% of your resources on, because this is the thing is, if you put all of your money on paying down debt, and listen, I'm not a financial expert. Expert. It's just, this is what I did, all right? I owe the IRS money in 2009, 2010, because I didn't look at my taxes, my accountant didn't take any taxes out, I had no idea. So that's, and then 2011 happened, and the IRS said, oh, by the way, you owe us money for, because I owe, own a business and I said oh okay I had no idea I thought my accountant would do that and they said no they didn't so I fired my accountant and then just wrote a check to the IRS and that's when I said I gotta get this shit handled so I started looking up the fees I started understanding that my financial advisor was taking 1% then the actual mutual fund was taking 1% so it, I wasn't actually making 7% I was actually making 5% and that's just above inflation and then I started saying I can actually do this on my own because he's not really managing my money he's just putting my money places that to be honest, I already know about. I already know about. You just you just put it where the market is. The market goes up. I think it's you know I think it's what six six and a half seven percent over the last twenty years on average through all the ebbs and flows. The market. That's the way I do it. Fifty percent you pay down your debt. Fifty percent you need the rainy day fund, especially if you're you own a business because if you're just paying down your debt and and you have no reserves then you're fucked. <laughs> That's really what it comes down to because you're just focusing, you're not focusing on 
anything that could happen, any opportunities that could come in place. So 50% towards your debt, 50% towards savings and things like that. The 401k, the IRA and things like that, Roth IRA, that's something for a further read on not only Tony Robbins' book, but that's also, that's, that's very long term, all right? And I mean savings accounts, uh, your, your aggressive accounts. So all those things can be read in Tony Robbins' book. Those are, those are the, the wrap ups. Know your bl blueprint, have a financial plan, principles, don't care about your feelings, stop thinking short term, look long term. The 72 hour rule, if it's in your Amazon cart, obviously think about it. I Listen, that's one thing that I need to work on. Automate good behavior, so auto transfer bills, auto transfer everything else but then also track it through zero. Highly recommend that. Reading too much financial news, focus on your personal economy and not the global economy and fees are expensive. Watch out for the mutual funds. So hope this helped just a little bit. Obviously, as I said, I'm not a financial expert. This is the one area that I really want to start paying attention to because financially, I just said, you know, it, it, everything will fall in place, but it's not. You actually have to track it, look after it. You have to educate yourself, and that's essentially what I'm doing. But these are the, the top things that I've noticed over the two years that have really helped me. If you guys have any questions, leave in the comments below. And as always, subscribe to the video. And in the comments, not only write something that I missed, number one, and number two is what you'd want to see on this channel. Have an amazing day. Talk to you guys soon. Thank <laughs> you.